Welcome to worship on this summer Sunday, Sunday after Pentecost, that uh, we are focusing on how it is that Jesus invites us to growth and new life. Today in the gospel reading, we hear that Jesus invited the disciples to join him in a wilderness, a deserted place. Henry Nouwen says that um, a wilderness can be thought of as a garden, that the word we translate here in this passage is suggestive of a marvelous garden and the potential that there is when we find a time apart. It can be translated as open country. So we're at a threshold time in the church. We are recording worship this morning Soon we'll be live streaming. We hope, however it is that you found us, you'll continue to connect. And as we join in, in moving through this wilderness time, threshold time of transitions, let us also be aware of the growth and new life in this season of Pentecost as new beginnings emerge and Maybe dr new dreams take shape among us. I hope you'll join us here in that at St. Timothy's, whether you can be physically present or not. We are glad you're here to worship. Welcome. Now will you join me in reflecting on why we come to God in these words of confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, who redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let's pray. To you, O God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sin. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. My siblings in Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. May the God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. Hear the word of the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up David, a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We gather together to worship and praise our Good Shepherd, who cares so well for us. The Lord is our shepherd, and we have all we are ever likely to need. We gather together to worship and praise our Good Shepherd, who safely leads us and gives us strength for the journey. The Lord is our shepherd, who allows us to rest and who renews our energies. We gather together to worship and praise our Good Shepherd, who offers us a feast when we are under pressure. The Lord is our shepherd, whose unfailing love is always there waiting for us. Amen. A reading from the letter to the church at Ephesus, a community divided by backgrounds and traditions. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who were called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, Jesus saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you on this morning from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to begin 
this meditation today with a, a personal reflection, confession, really. Sabbath keeping is difficult for me. Of the ten words given to the Israelites at the foot of Mount Sinai through the prophet Moses, a decalogue meant to keep them a life-giving and freedom-loving community, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, is perhaps where I fail the most. In what we count as the third commandment, the specific verse from Exodus has directions to amplify the vision. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is a Sabbath unto the Lord on which you must not. Yes, it was a different time thousands of years ago when your computer or TV screen didn't work after the sun had set. But for the pilgrim people finding their way in the wilderness so long ago, there was a day on which they had to rest, a day when they could have been working on which they had to rest and recognize the holy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So this is my challenge. It's not the worship part, of course. I'm glad to come and celebrate the resurrection promise with you each Sunday, which is our Christian Sabbath. And it's not my memory, really, that's the problem. And this is no joke about pastors being required to work on Sunday. This is just something that I can say I've wrestled with most of my life. It's not my memory that's the problem. It's my trust. The trust that I'm enough, that I've done enough, that my best effort will be enough for God to use my work to work God's purposes out in the world, in our congregation, in my life. It's not memory that challenges me. It's a lack of faith. Now, because of what I have just confessed to you, and really to the entire world through the gift of this internet, this one verse in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Mark speaks deeply to me. It's verse 30. Open your Bibles, take a look at it. The apostles gathered around Jesus. Psalm 42 says, Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. Some of us live life at a pace which just seems to carry us away like a rapid river rushing. Where did we just go, we wonder? <laughs> the waves crash around us and sweep over us, and in the midst of it all, of all that noise around us, the question is whether we will hear the invitation of Jesus, who once said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You will find rest for your soul. The World Herald reprinted an editorial from the Los Angeles Times this week. Loneliness weighs heavy on many, the headline says. This is the loneliest century humankind has ever known, it asserts. When surveyed, one in five millennials say they have no friends. One in five. Sixty percent, over half of nursing home residents in the United States, have no visitors. The rise of the so-called gig economy has left many without a sense of workplace community. 40% of office workers said they felt lonely. And these are all statistics 
from prior to the changes required of us in the pandemic. Our individual and communal mental and physical health are damaged when we are lonely. This is not God's intention for us. And social media is not the only culprit, but it is a factor. The article concludes with these words. We inadvertently built a lonely world, but it doesn't have to remain that way. Right. Each of us, I believe, has lost something, perhaps many things, in the pandemic. And some of us have lost our good health in one way or another. Some fell ill with the virus itself. Some lost their lives to it. Now, while we need not compare our griefs nor dwell in them, we should acknowledge them lest they haunt us. There is a lament that needs to be voiced. There is a lament that needs to be heard. Yes, we have learned some things too, thanks be to God, and we should not forget them. But that does not cancel the loss. And so it struck me immediately as I turned to the story of Jesus in Mark's Gospel, the sixth chapter, about how the disciples had been sent out. That's why they're called apostles now, you know. They were the sent ones, the ones sent forth. They'd been commissioned by Jesus. They were on this journey, doing what they'd been commissioned to do. Now, without many preparations and very few instructions, Mark tells us what they were. Let's just imagine that it might also have been a lonely and a bit scary task for them because they'd become a knit together community. They were drawn to the teaching of, teachings of Jesus and they had gathered around him and now they had been scattered, sent. They had a mission for sure, but they were apart, hard at work, two by two, the gospel says. So they shared the news about the kingdom of God as Jesus had taught it to them. And they cast out demons and they anointed with oil those who were sick and they learned to do what they needed to do and were commissioned to do in that time in new ways. And they heard then some news. You'll see it if your Bible is open to this chapter. They heard the news. John was dead. Verses 14 through 29 are a gruesome account of the beheading of John the Baptist. So they had been scattered, they were on a mission, and now they experience a collective trauma and deep grief. The death of a prophet, a teacher, perhaps even their friend. And now there is this shared sadness among them and perhaps a very legitimate fear of state violence raised by John's murder. Have you noticed that when we gather for worship, there's a pattern to how we worship together? There are four chief parts. They are gathering, word, meal, and sending. Sometimes we switch up the order, but gathering is the beginning. These 12 who had been sent out, now return to Jesus. They gather, and they have a shared grief as they do. They share tender stories, I imagine. There were six pairs of disciples, so that means there's 12 accounts of the time that they had been apart, and now here they are gathering. They have stories to tell. I imagine they are stories of people with heart-wrenching conditions and stories of people that have shared laughter with them and stories of challenges in the sun and the heat and the dust and 
the challenges of endurance, I imagine they are spiritually exhausted, but also a bit energized by the new knowledge that they have gained of how the power of God can work through them. But they gather. They need to gather. In this moment, they gather physically together. That's what Mark's telling us about. Just this one verse which follows the collective trauma, I think is perhaps enough for us to ponder on this day. Verse 30. Mark says, the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. All that they had done and taught. And Jesus listens. Jesus listens to them, to us. Those whom he has sent out have stories to tell and a grief to process, and he listens. He sees them. He knows them. He has compassion on them. Even before the others find them and bring a multiplicity of new needs, Jesus tends to the ones whom he has called. You have been called. In your baptism into Christ, God sees you. In Jesus, your story, your story matters. This is why it's key for us that we gather as God's people. It's why we're working currently both to restore the hospitality ministry that we once knew in the cafe, where with a cup of coffee or a treat, you might linger for a conversation with a friend about your life. And it's why we are seeking to offer ways to gather in this new virtual space, so to speak. So maybe you cannot leave your home on or your Sunday morning sports or work obligations, but you could connect with this faith community simply by using your very smart phone in a different way. It's why we need to gather however we can. For Jesus responds to the stories shared by his disciples with an invitation now to retreat. Come away with me in the wilderness, Jesus says, to the wilderness. In the specifics of the Gospel of Mark, it doesn't work out in such an idyllic fashion, actually. They're interrupted. Worst retreat ever. There are many to whom Jesus needs to respond and will respond. The verses which follow tell the story of Jesus leading the disciples to feed a multitude. He takes what is offered, five loaves, two fish, lifts it up, and when it is shared, a miracle happens. But first, he invites the disciples. Tell me your story. I will listen. There is time. And as we share our stories, we are connected in a way that transforms the world, which God so loves. If I hear the invitation to Sabbath keeping as law. I will always carry my sense of not measuring up. But what if I heard the invitation to Sabbath as gospel, as good news, as an opportunity God given to rest to be heard, to be renewed in faith and community, in the faith that God's promise and power can work through us, that God's grace is sufficient for us, and to celebrate that with praise and thanksgiving. What if I heard the Sabbath as gospel? There is good news here, my friends. 
The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not be in want. He will make you to lie down in green pastures and lead you beside calm waters. He restores your soul and gently guides you in right pathways so that his name might be made known. Even though you walk through the valley, the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because he is with you. His rod and his staff, may they comfort you. They will comfort you. He will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil, your cup overflows. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is Jesus. He hears you. Hear his word. Tell your story. Eat this meal. Be strengthened as you are again sent this day. Amen. Together, we profess our faith in Jesus, the Good Shepherd, using the words printed on your screen. I believe in Jesus, the best possible shepherd. His wisdom leads me to the best opportunities. His word comforts me when I am anxious or afraid. His arm steadies me when I feel weary and heavy laden. His wounded body displays the cost of my rescue. I believe in Jesus, the best possible shepherd. I believe that I do not find him, but he finds me, that I am under his care by virtue of sheer grace. The love he gives me is to be shared with others, that he treasures my name and prepares a place for me, that his fold transcends earth and heaven. I trust Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have compassion enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Jesus, out of your compassion for us, you invite us to come away with you to a place of rest and quiet. 
Help us to say yes and then to be able to come away with you. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Lord, out of your compassion, you care for those who are harassed, helpless, and lost. Sometimes we feel that way ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Lord, in your compassion, teach us to follow you, to trust you, to love you, and to love as you love. Lord, in your compassion, feed us who are hungry, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Lord, in your compassion, heal us in the places we need healed. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. And Lord, in your having compassion for us, teach us to have compassion for others as you do. Help us to show compassion and action the way you did. And remind us when it is time to come away with you for quiet and rest. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My siblings in Christ, I am glad you have joined us here to worship on this day. One of the challenges for us during this time, as we have found our way to the virtual space to worship together, is how do we share the meal that Christ feeds us with? So we continue to think about that and wrestle with that, and we found some ways to do that via Zoom and in a shared community during the pandemic. I want to say to you that if you have not been able to receive the sacrament, we want to find a way for that to happen. So I hope you'll write in the comments or send us an email and let us know and I want to share a prayer with you before I send you out. That is a prayer for a ministry that we are beginning again now in this time when it's safer, though we still follow some protocols to protect one another. Um, we have a caring ministry group, and this, this group of callers actually helps me to distribute communion. So I'm holding in my hand our... Um, home communion sets, which they come and pick up, and when we worship together, we sometimes uh, bless them with a prayer for that ministry. They'll be meeting again in August and gearing up, so let us know if you would like to have someone call on you, and or if you're able to be a part of this ministry, some of it can be done on the phone, too. We have lots of ways to care for one another and listen to our stories as a community. Let's pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with any who are sick or homebound. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament wherever they are, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let the people say amen. And now receive this benediction. May the Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen.